Um, dear friends and esteemed guests, it's an honour to be here with you all to say a few words about why reflecting on the Lausanne Treaty matters. For the devastating oppression of the Kurdish people enabled in its wake, and importantly, it provides an opportunity to reflect on the incredible resilience and transformation of the Kurdish movement for self-determination ever since. So what was the Lausanne Treaty? At the end of World War I, the Allies dictated quite punitive peace terms to the three empires they had defeated. In 1920, the Ottoman Empire signed the Treaty of Sevres. Kurds had secured a clause in the Treaty of Sevres, which set out the, the path to an independent Kurdistan after the disintegration of the Ottoman Empire within a year. But the events of two short years later, however, turned the tables geopolitically, allowing the Turks to bounce back in an assertive ultra-nationalist guise to tear up Sevres and negotiate a very different order. So fighting had continued in the Middle East, at least until 1922, when the Greco-Turkish War in Asia Minor ended in Turkish victory. During the Lausanne Conference, Turkey used its alliance with Russia to secure numerous concessions from the European allied powers. To garner US support, Turkey granted a monopoly for railway construction and mineral exploitation in the country uh, for American interests. After nine months of negotiations in the Swiss resort of Lausanne, a new peace treaty was signed on the 24th of July, 1923. Lausanne marked the birth of the Republic of Turkey, as well as the advent of two new players in Middle East politics, the United States and big oil. The Western European allies abandoned their, let's face it, quite lukewarm advocacy of Kurdistan and Armenia's independence and shattered aspirations for a Kurdish state, dividing Kurds within newly defined territories across Turkey, Syria, Iran and Iraq, leaving Kurdistan subject to a process of internal colonization, driven by cultural assimilation into new national identities and a related process of economic de-development. Lausanne also forcibly displaced more than 1.5 million ethnic Greeks and Turks. This so-called unmixing of ethnicities was seen then as a peace tool but it's now understood as the violent ethnic cleansing that it is. For the signatories at Lausanne, peace meant amnesty. There was no more talk of holding Turkey to account for the 1915-16 Armenian genocide. Making peace meant forgetting self-determination and other promises contained in Woodrow Wilson's 14 points of 1918. For the Armenians, Kurds, Arabs and other communities who had invested so much in Wilson's rhetoric of self-determination, Lausanne was the crime of the century. The Lausanne Treaty set in motion a century of devastating state violence and structural oppressions against the, Tur against the Kurds in Turkey, Iraq, Iran and Syria in different ways, but all marked by colonial relations of dehumanization forced assimilation and violent concerted efforts to destroy Kurdish cultural identity. But whilst Lausanne is remembered and protested as the broken promise of an independent Kurdish state, the Kurdish liberation movement over the last three decades in particular has developed the political ideas and tools for a progressive vision that goes beyond the nation state as the source of self-determination. So I want to focus on this political pivot, um, you know, over 30 years ago towards democratic confederalism developed by the Kurdistan Workers' Party, the PKK, probably the most important secular insurgent leftist political movement in the Middle East. So the PKK's call in 1978 in its manifesto for an independent state was then seen as the only correct political goal of a national liberation movement. Importantly, its other goal was the transformation of Kurdish society through the elimination of relations of exploitation. 
primarily through land reform and redistribution, um, but also the idea that social revolution, including kind of um, the end of gender exploitation, would be enabled through an independent state. But importantly, a process of critique and self-critique, uh, particularly in the 2000s, resulted in PKK leader Abdullah Öcalan transforming the ideology and political organisation of the PKK um, through the idea of self-government um, whilst uh, being a stateless society. Reflecting on how other national liberation movements who had gained statehood did not deliver emancipatory or democratic societies, Öcalan came to see the nation state as the centre of assimilation and homogenization that put people and borders under surveillance. For Öcalan, the desire to bring congruence between territory and culture went hand in hand with assimilation, expulsion and ethnic cleansing and genocide. The PKK's new understanding of self-determination revolved around the ideas of democratic autonomy and democratic confederalism, aimed at developing people's capacities to govern themselves. So by democratic autonomy, this refers to a regrounding of the political status of people on the basis of self-government rather than people's relations with the state. It refers to practices in which people produce and reproduce the necessary and desired conditions for living through direct engagement and collaboration with one another. This idea is institutionalized through democratic confederalism. It aims at strengthening local administrative capacities organized in the form of councils at the levels of the village, the urban neighborhood, the district, the city, and also at the regional level, which in relation to Turkey is referred to as Northern Kurdistan. So we can understand democratic confederalism as a network of local democratic assemblies. In part, Abdullah Öcalan was inspired by the ideas of the American political theorist, Murray Bookchin. Participatory communal forms of politics or often referred to as the council movement, have a rich and long, albeit marginalized history from Hellenic times to the Paris Commune to currents in the American Revolution. In Kurdistan, these currents have been revived under the umbrella of the Kurdistan Communities Union or KCK, coordinated in the Kurdistan region of Turkey by the Democratic Society Congress and in Syria by the Democratic Society Movement, or TEVDEM. The right to self-determination is not translated in establishing a Kurdish nation state, but is found in a bottom-up or grassroots democracy and a related active citizenship. Importantly, a big part of the PKK's ideology on the roots of oppression is in overcoming gender hierarchies. Kurdish women are central in transforming society and gender equality and also ecology are a central part of the practice of democratic confederalism. But both experiments have been under attack by Turkey since their inception. The KCK has been targeted with an extreme police operation from at least around uh, 2010, where tens of thousands of people over the years have been charged and detained for trumped up offences relating to support of the PKK. These operations are deliberately targeted to disrupting ordinary people, as well as politicians and activists in civil society. The de facto establishment of Rojava in 2012, now the autonomous administration of North and East Syria, is well known for its armed resistance against ISIS but it's less known for its ongoing practice of democratic confederalism, a network of autonomous administered localities and regions were able to establish themselves and create a space for a new progressive politic around security, justice, education and agricultural production. The Ba'athist policies dispossessing Kurdish peasants were annulled and instead the multicultural composition of the region was embraced and a diversified regional market thrived, 
through the democratising decisions that ordinary people made over local economic resources. Turkey, however, has engaged in multiple military operations close by, and these remain a future threat. So to conclude, on the centenary of Lausanne, we need to look closely to and support these practices of radical democracy as living everyday forms of self-determination, as well as redouble efforts to hold nation states accountable for their ongoing oppression of the Kurds and serious human rights abuses. Thank you.